So never tip your ladle, just put it straight down into the liquid and then just go ahead and uh, skim, okay? Uh, let's see, I've got a container to put my fat in and it's gonna look just like this. I wish I had a third hand so I could hold this camera up for you. I could try something here. Hmm. If only I had a professional photographer friend that could give me advice for this sort of thing. I'm looking at you, Ms. Debbie. All right, so in I go with my uh, ladle and I'm just going to corral the fat and the film or scum that is on top. You can see how the proteins kind of coagulate on the surface, that's that film I'm talking about. And I'm scooping up fat, I'm scooping up um, fo uh, foam and scum off the top. And if I do this correctly, I can get all of the fat off of here, or a majority of it, without uh, losing any of my valuable, valuable sauce. And I'm doing pretty good so far. And by the way, this fat, I might throw it in a stock pot or something and uh, let that kind of add flavor to the stock. And then I just kind of pull the fat off of the stock at the end and I can reuse that for kitchen purposes sometimes. I never throw anything away. So still just pulling fat off the surface. And again, it's boiling over or simmering over on one side and pushing the fat over to the other so it's concentrating over there, okay? It's much easier to scoop like that. Another trick is to go straight down into the center and I'll, I'll put the butt of the ladle in. I give it a little stir and what it does is it spreads the fat out to the edges and then I go around the edges of the pot and scoop up more fat. So both, both ways, using the stove to do it, using the fire to push it over, or using the butt of your ladle, give it a little stir, push it out to the sides. You can physically push it out to the sides and concentrate the fat so it's easier to scoop up. Although these little tricks, you ever hear anybody on Food Network talk about this stuff? I doubt it. Actually teaching you how to cook? My God, what would the world come to if we did something like that? This is why I don't cook you through recipes. There's enough people doing that stuff out there. And there are billions of recipes out there. You don't need me for recipes. But evidently, not too many people talk about this. So that is what I feel is my calling. There was a little bit of fat on this. We used that uh, fat to cook roux earlier and uh, a little bit of fat came from those sh uh, short ribs as well, okay? So I've done pretty well with my fat. It's looking pretty good. And I've got a fairly thin looking sauce here. It's not gonna shine up my short ribs. It's just gonna run, run right off of them and they'll look, they'll look dry again in seconds, okay? So I want a little bit of what we call a nappe. I was using that term this morning to where that idea that the sauce is thick enough to coat the back of a spoon, okay? That's what a nappe is. That's your sauce consistency, all right? Good to see you, Kathy. Rick, Joe is back, looking good. Okay, so let me pull this ladle out. I'm gonna to switch to a whisk. There's that flat whisk I was using this morning. And I have a clear glass here and I use clear so you can see inside. I got a little bit of cornstarch in there, probably much more than I need, but cornstarch is cheap. It's not, cornstarch is cheap. It's not a big deal to use that much, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add about an, ex, an equal amount of um, water to this. I think I'm gonna to switch to a fork because my whisk will never fit down in here. So a little bit cold water about an equal amount, and I got a fork in there, and I don't know if you've ever played with cornstarch and water, but you know how it all settles down. Every time I use this, you're gonna wanna stir it, you're gonna see me stir it, and then use it. And then when I, if I gotta use a little more, I'll stir it again and use it again, okay? You wanna keep that cornstarch kind of floating around in there rather than settling, because it wants to settle really quickly. I'm already feeling some settling on the bottom, okay? So let me just set that aside. I'm gonna do one more skim. It seems like a little more fat is kind of, uh, um, bumped up in there, there my, there's my ladle. A little more fat is kind of collected on one side. That's gonna be my last skim, boom. All right, so you can kind of, I'm gonna turn this off and just kind of show you the consistency again of this sauce, okay? Take a look at this, it's impossible to know the consistency unless you're dragging a spoon through it or or touching it, stirring it in some way. Otherwise, you just look at a pot, you can't tell how thick it is or not, right? So, it's kind of thin right now. You're gonna see me, I've turned it off, and now I'm gonna stir this again, and I'm gonna pour in about a tablespoon of this stuff, just a little bit. And I'm gonna stir that in. I don't even really need a whisk. I don't even know why I grabbed a whisk, okay? Now that instantly got 
perceptibly thicker. It's not very thick, but I never know how, how thick something's gonna be until I hit a boil when I use starches to thicken, okay? So what I'm gonna do is crank it up to 11, okay, on the spinal tap scale, and this baby's gonna come back up to a boil in just one second. It was just boiling a second ago, okay? So we are waiting patiently. I'm giving it another little stir just to make sure nothing, none of that starch is settling to the bottom. Shouldn't have that problem, but you know, just in case. And I'm, I thought I heard a boil in there, but no. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're very patient. Actually, I'm not a very, I, I, I'm a very patient man. I just don't like to use my patience. Well, let's see, how much fat do you remove? Fat equals flavor, right? I always wonder about that. Excellent question, Ms. Debbie, Debbie Cunningham. So I try to remove all of the fat I can off of the surface. As we look at these um, shorter, there's still a bunch of uh, fat in there. So I think we've got plenty of fat going on in this dish, but that is an excellent, uh, um, excellent question. Um, in general terms, whenever I'm doing sauce work, we're trying to remove every little bit of fat off there. If you've ever, if you know what consomme is, it's this perfectly clear uh, uh, broth, right? Um, uh, the, the thing with consomme is there isn't a single drop of fat. It's crystal clear. It's sheer perfection in a bowl. It's nothing but flavor. And even though there's no fat in it, you can still get flavor out of it. Okay. So um, let me go ahead. I just hit the boil and I want to show you the consistency now. It's just a little bit thicker. I think I'm going to take it one more stage. This is how I work with cornstarch. I put a tiny bit in at a time because I, I you know, I, it's not a, it's, it's a, more of an eyeball thing, right? And so I put in a tiny bit, I turn off the flame, I add, a, uh, I add it, I see how thick it is, and if it's not thick enough, I can always add more. But if I dump too much in there, now I gotta thin it out and now I am um, watering down or diluting my flavors in there, okay? So give it another stir, that starch wants to kind of settle to the bottom. I'm gonna just give it another tablespoon or so, a couple little dips and dabs, that's probably gonna do it for me. I got way, way more slurry than I need, but again, cornstarch is cheap, not a big deal. My fire was off, right? And so that gives me a chance to get over here and stir this. By the way, I once poured slurry into a pot that was furiously boiling, and as soon as the slurry hit it, it just turned into noodles instantly. So that is why I'm turning my flame off. You want that cornstarch to get a chance to kind of disperse in there before it starts setting up, okay? So now that I got it in there, flame back on, and we're gonna see this thing thicken up the rest of the way. As I'm waiting for this, that starch isn't quite gelled yet, but I'm gonna get into my testing mode. I've got my two spoons. My left hand is always tasting. My right hand is always for dipping, okay? Now, another way to thicken is by reduction, reducing, okay? And that means I'm just gonna simmer it, remove water, and that's gonna concentrate flavors. But the problem here is if I, concentrate too much, let's say it's kind of thin, I might taste it, my flavor might be perfect right there. It might be the most perfect sauce flavor you've ever had in your life, but it's still thin, you don't want to reduce anymore. Now's the time I bring in a cornstarch slurry. So the moral of the story is I want to determine, I want to get it to the flavor I want, and then if it needs an adjustment on consistency, that's when I take care of that, okay? Hey, Nicole, good to see you. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little taste here. Um, and so I dip with one, I put a little bit in the other, and oh, it's gonna be hot. Delicious, okay? This is awesome. It's a really good flavor. And one of the things, I'm done tasting. I am very, very happy with this. how this came out. I've been tasting it all afternoon, to be honest. Um, but this afternoon, I was talking about how Everything I do, everything I show people, whenever I teach a class, I try to strip things down to as few ingredients as possible. I am featuring technique here, not fancy recipes with 50 different ingredients in them, right? You can find those recipes anywhere on the planet, but very rarely do you ever hear chefs talking about uh, uh, the actual technique behind the recipe unless you're you're going to culinary art school. These are the only people that ever talk about this stuff, okay? So um, anyway, getting back to it. I am very, very happy with the flavors I got. I, it, just, it just blows my mind that I think I said I had seven, maybe eight ingredients in this thing and just the, the mind blowing flavor you get out of just such a simple, simple preparation. I gotta say the short ribs did most of the work here, okay? So I'm liking my consistency right there. I got a pretty decent looking sauce. I'm gonna pull my short ribs over. The veggies are all underneath. I've stripped all those thyme leaves. I've got a finished sauce here. This is where the dish all comes together. A braised item is seared. It's simmered until tender, and then it is served in a sauce made from the liquid you cooked in. Braising 101. 
Oh, it's so gorgeous, guys. I don't like to blow my own horn. I'm not the greatest chef in the world, I'll tell you that. You know, I just, I've, I've worked a bunch of places and everything, and you know, I, gotta, I'm, I get lucky, you know? I have a lot of luck on my side. I think that's what, uh, uh, if anything has helped me succeed over the years, it's that. Okay, whoa, caught it. All right, I have a little extra sauce in there. That stuff is solid gold. It takes a couple of days to make a beautiful veal stock or a demi gloss or something in a restaurant. Um, uh, we just cranked out a couple of quarts of it here just by making some dinner for ourselves. And now I got this extra sauce to have around. And it's a sauce that the neighbors will be jealous of. Nobody has that kind of thing at home, right? How, how many people have brown sauce around their place, right? So there I have my beautiful, beautiful short ribs. I'm gonna kind of pull up a few of the, yeah, I that spoon, that whisk. Let me get a spoon here. Pull up a few of these veggies so you can kind of see some of that the mushrooms, and ladies and gentlemen, I think we are in business there. Let me just show off a little more color on this for my uh, Instagram shot. I'm not lying. I gotta get a little Insta shot here. Get a little color going. Okay, so um, that takes care of the second half of the day. Let me show you what this looks like in my little pot. It's hot enough to eat right now, but I might just give it a little blast of rocket fuel just to bring it up to temp and make sure those um, those short ribs are heated through and through. But otherwise, this guy's ready for prime time, okay? I could uh, uh, definitely serve this in a restaurant, but even better, uh, I think I could definitely just eat it myself with my, with my beautiful, lovely wife, okay? So um, that is basically the end of part two. We um, just cut off the string from our uh, short ribs. We, um, I sauteed up some extra vegetables and added that in there because the other vegetables we cooked with were just like mush at this point. And um, I showed you how to work a little cornstarch. And most importantly, I think the most important lesson of the entire day, maybe of your life, how to use a ladle, how not to hold it from the top, but hold it from the balance point and go ahead and skim things off the, off the top of your sauces, stocks, whatever it is, okay? So um, that is the end of part two, two, two of quarantine, kitchen, happy hour. Thanks for joining me today, guys. It was, a, it was a good session. I feel like I got a lot of good stuff out there for you. I hope y'all enjoyed, okay? Don't forget, the party is always, always in the kitchen. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Hits.